Today I'm going to share my grandma's recipe. She was born in Japan and if she's alive now, she should be 95 years old. This is one of my favorite recipes out of 200 recipes on my web. Let me tell you guys, I nailed it. <laughs> so I hope you will stick around until the end. And we will be starting with sweet and sour cabbage pickles. Peel the skin of carrot after washing it, thinly slice, stack up, then shred it. If your carrot is organic, you can keep the skin on for the extra fiber, then transfer it into the large bowl. Next, I have this gigantic cabbage. It is a spring seasonal cabbage, so as you can see, the leaf is looser and less fibrous. Cabbage is abundant in winter and spring. Each of them has a different characteristic. For spring, I love to enjoy it raw. Shred them into about half inch pieces and pile onto the carrot. It's quite a lot. I use about 500 gram of cabbage equivalent to half cabbage. Exact measurement can be found in the description box below. Now we're gonna massage everything together to remove the moisture. Sprinkle one teaspoon of salt. Get your hands in and massage. For my grandma, pickles are must have at least once a day. I have three more pickle recipes down in the description box below. As you keep doing it, you will start to feel the veggies are lightly wilt. Can you see through the screen? At this point, leave it for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, let's work on the marinade. Peel the skin of ginger. If your ginger is fresh, you can scrape the skin by using an edge of spoon. Mine is too tough to do, so I use a knife. Thinly slice, stack up, then shred them. In a small pot, add one teaspoon of chili flakes, ginger, and one and a half tablespoon of toasted sesame oil for the nuttiness. Cook it over meat heat, let the aroma bloom for two minutes, then add six tablespoons of rice vinegar, four tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. Simmer it over small heat until the sugar and salt are fully dissolved, which will take you only a minute or so. Make sure to stir it continuously as it's burnt easily. Off the heat and let it come down to the room temperature. And back to veggies, take a big handful and squeeze it. Lots of water came out. This will allow the veggies to absorb more tasty marinade and prevent it from getting soggy. <laughs> when the marinade cools down, drizzle over the veggies and toss them to coat. And wait for at least one hour or possibly overnight. It will last five days, so great for meal prep too. You can put them into the bento box, enjoy as a side of a curry, or pasta, or even put into the sandwich, just like other pickles. The options are endless. Mm. I have a couple recommended recipes to go along with this pickle, so check out the link in the description box below. And next up, miso grilled onigiri and miso mayo dipping sauce. If I have to pick only one to recommend you guys from today's recipe, this is it. But it's so hard to pick one because all of them works complimentally. But anyways, let's continue. Mince one clove of garlic. If you want it to be garlicky, you can use two. Since I'm making it for kids, one should be just enough. And for leek, finely chop them. The leek I found in Japan is thin and well rinsed beforehand, but if you see lots of dirt coated between the layers, make sure to rinse off after you cut them. Sharrot and spring onion will work as a sub. And for sauce, we need four condiments. If you want to know how to store the miso paste, again, I went through in another video.
In a bowl, add one teaspoon of sugar, two tablespoons of mirin, and one teaspoon of soy sauce, and two and a half tablespoons of miso paste. I'm using yellow miso paste here, but any miso will do. And just a heads up, usually, not always though, the darker the color gets, stronger and saltier taste become. And give it a good mix until there are no more lumps. To know more about the Japanese pantry essentials, I have a video plus shop page on my web. As always, let me leave the link for you in the description box below. And to a pan of meat heat, add toasted sesame oil for that flavor and followed by garlic and leek. Let it cook until it's softened. It will take you 2 to 3 minutes. Then add miso mixture. Make sure to lower the heat to small since there's a chance to splatter on you. I always prepare the lid next to me just in case. Cook it off over low heat until it starts to thicken. And make sure to scrape off all of the yumminess. And once it starts to curdle up, off the heat immediately since it's gonna continue to thicken as it's cooled down. Transfer to the container and it will last a week in the fridge. You can just top it on the rice and enjoy with the nori siwi. This is our quick and easy breakfast staple. But for today, let me show you two delicious ways to enjoy it. The first one is addictive dipping sauce. It cannot be even called as a recipe, just mix with mayo. I do one part mayo, two parts miso mixture. Please tweak the ratio to your desired texture. Since this dipping sauce is on the savory side, you want to pair with anything fresh like cucumber, celery, and carrot. My picky kids literally devour veggies with this dipping sauce, which made me so, so happy because they don't usually take raw vegetables. Next, grilled miso onigiri. I particularly love the combination with the cabbage pickle, so stay tuned. On a plastic wrap, make a bed of steamed sticky rice. Then place miso mixture in a center. And as you can see, it's a lot more firm and pasty as the time passes. And then cover it with the rice. Just enough to cover the miso mixture. Close it up and made a mountain shape using the palm. Gently rotate to shape the triangle and try to make it tight so that it won't break apart when you grill it later. Open the wrap and leave it for 5 minutes to dry up the surface. This is another tip to make your rice bowl hold it together when you grill them. And repeat the same process until you use up all the rice. After 5 minutes, flip and do another 5 minutes on the other side. Now it's time to grill our onigiri. To a nonstick pan, grease some oil. I'm using rice oil, but any neutral oil will do. Okay, back to the pan. Gently place your onigiri in smother the soy sauce on one side. If you have a brush, it will do the better job here. And 
and flip and do the same on the other side. It doesn't have to be charred at this point. Cook over mid heat and let them cook about two minutes on each side. And just re repeat the same process twice or until you have a nice smoky toasty mark on both sides. The outer side is crunchy and smoky, but inside is still moist and fluffy. And of course, there is a miso filling inside. It's just divine. You guys have to try this. Transfer to the plate and garnish even more mixo mixture on top if you want. But this is just for the presentation purpose. And lastly, we cannot skip miso soup, can we? To a pot, add water and dashi packet. If you don't have a dashi packet, just use comb stock powder or even vegetable stock works too. And once it comes to a boil, let it cook for 4 to 5 minutes over mid heat. Meanwhile, let's work on the okra. The stem of okra is usually a little tough, so I'm removing them like this, but totally skippable. Cut into bite-sized pieces. The sliminess of okra will help your digestion. And how many of you are familiar with this okra? By the time your dashi will be ready, so shake it off, then discard. Add okra and cook it off for another five, one minute. I don't want the okra to be too soft. In goes tofu. Once the okra has reached your desired texture, dissolve miso paste. Having soup into your meal definitely keeps you satisfied without overeating. And ready to be enjoyed. Today's recipe will probably rank in my top 10 favorite recipes. I like it because you can make ahead of time and kids love it. If you make one, tag me at Miwa Japanese Cooking Class. Don't forget to subscribe and like, share with your friends and family. And thanks for watching. See you soon. Mata ne, bye bye. No. Oh,